Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this 4K HDMI switch. So this is something where you would have five different inputs to one output. For example, you haven't got many HDMI ports on your TV, and you plug in the cable from the TV to here, and then you can have five different inputs. You can select the input by pressing this here, and it will cycle through the different inputs, or you've got the little remote control here that you can press here, as long as you plug in this little IR receiver here, like so. Very cheap devices, I'm not sure about the 4K ones, but I've got a few of these in my house. They were, from memory, between five and 10 pound. They weren't expensive, so maybe 4K ones might be up on the 10 pound mark. So it was sent in by a subscriber called Steve, and uh, he's also sent in something else as well, so we'll look at that in another video. But it says here, the HDMI switch five to one. When the power cable is plugged in, it gets very hot. Maybe an easy fix for you. Right, well, check this out. He is not wrong, but there's something interesting because when I use the lead from this one here, it cuts out straight away. So let's get rid of this and this for the time being because we're not going to need that. Watch this. So you can see now, there's nothing wrong with the lead there. Now, when I plug it into here, it draws a huge amount of amps. Can you see there? 1.5 amps. And sure enough, after a minute, you can feel the lead getting warm. I can already feel it heating up now. Okay, so you take my word for that, you can see it's drawing that. But look at this, now this is interesting. As far as I can see, the leads are the same. If I use the one from here and plug it in, it cuts out instantly. So watch this, work in. Sorry, wrong, <laughs> wrong one, sorry. Work in, bang, off. Try to turn it on, nothing there. So it cuts out this straight away. So that says to me there's a short, but why is it working on this one? So now, on my one, really weird. So I wanna test the lead to begin with. You can see now, when I plug in, hold on, did that light up there? There you go, can you see there? They light up there for a split second. There. And then when you have the inputs connected, you can then go through them. All right, let's see if it lights up on Steve's lead. Yeah, it does. So what's going on? Why is it okay with one lead, but not the other lead? Are the wires, I mean, I don't get that because it should be just, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's measure for voltage. It should be just as outer pin negative, center pin positive, unless it's different on, uh, on this one here. But that would be a little bit confusing. So let's see now on Steve's lead, what it's doing. So we have 5.1 volts center pin positive. Yeah, right. Now, which is what you would expect out of USB. Now, let's go here. 5.2 center pin positive. What is that about? Really, really strange. So that's the first thing that's confused me. Anyway, let's take it apart. I'm hoping at the end, both leads will work on it. I think there's a short, but why this passes the short through and cuts this out and this doesn't is confusing to me. So uh, yeah, very, very, very weird. Now, it looks like there is no screw, so I presume this thing just pries apart. It must be just clipped together. Okay, ah, okay, can't be fixed. Look, chip's blown. There you go, completely blown through there. Uh, that's a shame. Right, well that's what's causing the short. So, we should be able to test from here, see if we get a short on our multimeter. So if we go between here and here, what's our meter showing? Yes, yeah, seven ohm short. What's our lead showing? near enough for seven ohm short, so there's a full short there. Right, okay, yeah, that can't be fixed. I'm not even gonna wear attempt to. Uh, the price of the chip would probably be the price of this item itself. So maybe it just overheated and blew, or did another component blow to make that blow? But that is definitely a catastrophic failure in the middle. Let's just see how much these cost. Well, there you go, I can't believe it's that cheap. Six pound 53 with free postage. I mean, maybe that would squeeze in as a large letter, not too sure. 
But if it doesn't, you're going to be paying two pounds something, aren't you, just for the postage? It's unbelievable that people can make a profit on that. I would say they're making next to nothing pennies. But there you go, which is a real shame, isn't it? Because why does something like that have to be so cheap? If it wasn't such a race to the bottom, they could easily charge 10 or 15 pounds for that and people would pay that all day long. But everybody undercuts and undercuts and undercuts until they're making pennies on each item. One goes 40, missing in the post, you've got to sell another 50 of them just to break even. Great for customers, no good as a business idea. Anyway, there we have it, a 4K switch, £6.53. Uh, there's no point in even looking into the chip because by the time you get your chip delivered, I'm sure it's going to cost more than £6.53. Right, I'll tell you what, let's move straight on to the other item Steve sent. Right, so the next one is an 800 watt blender. And it just says here, uh, tea break repair. Do you know what? I'm not sure. I might put it down as a... I'm not too sure what I'm going to do, whether it's going to be tea break repair or whether it's going to be uh, on the video. Let's see what happens with this one here. And it suddenly fell to work. No obvious cause, no smoke, smoke etc. The fuse is good. So, uh, yeah, basically, there we go. I don't know if he's taking it apart or not. It's got all the associated bits in there. Let's see what it does when we plug it in. So I'm plugging it in now and turn it on. Right, so obviously that should spin when you turn it on. And we have a nice little clicky dial. Oh, I like that. Well, initial impressions feels quite weighty, feels quite nice. Got a turbo button there. Right, what could have caused this? The lead looks in very good condition. Now I know Steve has already checked the fuse because he said he had, but I just want to double check. It is a five amp fuse. And let's just check the continuity. Yeah. Right, this looks like it's been peeled off. Is there any screw under there? No, I don't think there is. So how is this going to come apart? Well, basically, I'm going to make this into a tea break fix. The Bottom line is that uh, you can't repair this. Now, I'm not talking about the inside. I'll show you the inside in a moment. It's been glued shut. So in order to get into it, you've got to take off the top bit and that then uncovers a couple of screws and you take off the little clicky ring that turns around the speed control at the top and that uncovers more screws. But that only gives you access to part of the circuit board. And that did allow me to actually test the lead. So the lead itself is okay. There's nothing wrong with this lead. So the neutral and the live is working fine all the way into the device. But I can't get to the circuit board because it needs to come apart. And the way it's put together is basically the bottom plastic is glued, yes, glued onto the main body. So there's no way you can get it off. I tried to use heat, it wasn't budging whatsoever. When I say glued, I mean properly welded, like really nicely welded. So this turns into, let's just find out what's wrong with it. I had to dremel it to get it open. There's no tear down videos on this particular model and I'm not wrong, it's glued. There's no doubt about it, I had to peel it and then I had to basically make it so that the glue was only holding on by one millimeter all the way around, then I had to break the seal. There's no way that I can see that you can get in this without being completely destructive. So unfortunately it's unrepairable, which is a real shame because maybe if they made it in a way with screws and rubber O-rings and stuff, they could have still made it waterproof while still being safe. I mean, I do get it. There's 240 volts going into this thing and you're using it in a kitchen to mix stuff up. And a lot of those things that you're mixing could be wet or are going to be wet so obviously you need it to be super safe because you've got 240 volts going into it so i do get it i just thought in my mind that it might have been repairable but note to self don't buy handheld blenders uh, to try and fix because i'd say probably most of them maybe the more generic cheap ones are just going to be glued together so you can't uh, you can't fix it but I still want to find out what's wrong with this one so as you can see in this bit now I'm just dremeling through it to get to the inside so we can test the circuit board just to find out what the failure point was as I say not a fix it video anymore can't be fixed just to find out what actually went wrong yeah at long last at long last we have got to it. Right, okay, now, I mean, we've got a nice big motor there. Looks like a 540, now it looks much bigger. I wonder, would that be better on a radio control car? What voltage are you? Oh, 220 to 240 volts. Right. 
Okay, so we have the little board here. Let's see if we can work out why this thing's got no power at all. I wonder, could it just be the little on and off switches? Top one was the power one, bottom was turbo. So this is the power one. So first of all, let's see if we have continuity when we press that button here between these two points. Let's zoom in. Right, meter set to continuity. Going across here and press in. Right, so it's not that. Let's go, is there any capacitors or anything on here? No, so I don't need to worry about getting a shock. Right, let's go on to the turbo one, but that's not gonna stop it from working, is it? No, that's okay. Right, so we have a bridge rectifier here. There's four diodes. That's gonna be for the DC motor. And we have some kind of uh, NXP transistor type thing here. Okay, so let's just try to work out what's going on. The power comes in. Power comes in here. Oh, we've got a fuse. Is it gonna be the fuse? Let's have a little looky here. I reckon it's the fuse. Haha, <laughs> it's the fuse. Yep, yeah, fuse is blown. Ah, yep, yeah, fuse is gone. What caused the fuse to go? Could it have been a surge in the house or is it something on here? What fuse are you, I wonder? Let's zoom in on it. I don't know what that is. Oh, two amp, it's a two amp fuse. Two amp fuse. I wonder, could I just put something in its place? That's just come out now, that little uh, wire there. I wonder, could I put something in its place just to see if it comes to life or not? Let me see what I've got. Well, right, I've got some two amp fuses from RS Components. They're a different design, but I just want to put, pop one in just purely for testing anyway. You see at the top there, it says T2A. There you go, just here. So let's just jump us straight over that one. Okay, so we've soldered that wire back on. We've bodged the fuse just on the wrong side, just covering over the other fuse, but it's not shorting against anything else because that neutral's on the same track there. And we've just put the wires back on here. I'm not sure which way around they go, but I'm thinking it's not gonna matter because it's only gonna be going backwards rather than forwards. It should still work. So obviously now there's 240 volts going in here. I am just gonna be tapping it with my insulated screwdriver, which is insulated to much more than uh, 240 volts, but I can't remember what it is rated to. All I'm gonna be doing is tapping that one there and we wanna see whether that motor kicks off. If the motor kicks off, then we know that it's, uh, we know that it was just a fuse that's gone. I'm wondering though, would the fuse just blow or is something blown at that fuse? Now, the problem is that motor is gonna go, it's gonna jump, isn't it? Right there, 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 can I press that? Or is that gonna be hard to do? Let's get something behind here as well. Now I can hold on to that and do that. Right, as long as that motor doesn't go too crazy, I should be okay with that. Now I'm just gonna uh, sort of shield my face a little bit just in case it explodes as we turn it on. Let's see now. Okay, no explosion, we're plugged in. Here goes, is it gonna work? No, not working. Ooh, one second, did I put the fuse? I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I didn't put the fuse back in. Right, okay. Now, let's see if it's gonna work. So, that's there, that's gonna be in here. Okay, here goes. Now, watching my face, I'm plugged in. Lights are on. Okay, lights are on, so that's a good sign. Right, let's see now, insulated screwdriver, do your thing. Can anybody spot the mistake that I'm about to make? I honestly thought what I was doing now was completely safe. But some of you might already know that what I'm doing 
is going to end the way it's going to end. So uh, yeah, have a little think about it now. You can even pause the video and then uh, see if you can spot the mistake that I made. Oh, did it want to go there or did it blow? Whoa. Hmm. Now, what's happening there? Is it because I'm not pressing it hard enough? Or is it? Uh, is there a problem? Jesus Christ, did you see that? Nice. Christ, did you see that? Now, what's happened there? Have I got the motor on the wrong way? What happened there? Is my fuse intact? Ha ha! No. Fuse has gone again. Right, okay. Did you see that bang? That was nice, wasn't it? Right, well, there's no AC voltage in here. Right, I think that's safe to touch. That came out. So did I have the uh, did I have the battery in the wrong way? The the oh no, I did. I didn't realise. I thought it wouldn't make a difference. Can you see? There's a positive here. I had the terminals on wrong. Look. Can you see there? Positive. And I had a negative. Oh, I should have paid more attention to what was there. Can you see now? The the brush here has come out. Well, that is a shame because we didn't prove what the actual fault was. We know the fuse has blown, but we didn't know whether other stuff has blown or not. But I'm going to try to just do a Vinci bodge up. I just want to know whether it was only the fuse that failed on here. So I'm going to mess around with the uh, trying to get that little carbon brush back into the motor because basically uh, that's what contacts the middle of the motor along with the one on the negative side as well to make it work. Uh, also, don't obviously copy what you see in my videos. You see that uh, I make plenty of mistakes. I do show those mistakes as well because it is real life, but you should only take my videos for entertainment. I believed what I was doing there was safe. I just thought the motor would have spun the other way. I just didn't, I was thinking more like a Skeletrix motor or a DC motor in a, in a, a Tamiya radio control car. You know, put positive one side, negative one side, and then it will go forward. Put positive the other side, negative the other side, and then it will go backwards. I thought it was as simple as that. But obviously, not the case on a blender. So lesson learned. AC motors, I believe it doesn't matter which way you put the polarity round, they'll spin the same way. I thought DC motors were, depending on the way you put polarity, depends on the way you spin, but obviously not in all instances. So always, always, always check. That's the only thing you're going to learn from this video. Well, two things, don't copy me. And secondly, uh, always check the polarity on a DC motor as well. Hopefully I'll never forget that. So I'm going to just try to bodge something up together just to see. I just want to see if we can get this motor to spin or prove what the original fault was. Okay, so a new fuse has been put back in and I've kind of bodged up that wire there. But you know what? There's... I don't think that brush there is going to work. That's what I think anyway. Right, let's plug it in. It shouldn't go bang as soon as I plug it in, should it? Just a bit, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm a bit apprehensive. I'm going to plug it in with an extension lead across the room. Right, so I've got my extension lead here. I've got about six or seven meters unraveled. I'm going to plug it in. Now I'm going to plug in the other end from a safe distance. Then it won't explode in my face. Right, I'm plugged in. I'm going to turn it on now. Okay, we've got blue lights. That's good. Now, personally, 
I don't want to press that button with the screwdriver because it's it's too uh, <laughs> it's too close after last time. I'm going to get a broom. I'm going to get a wooden broom. Okay, it's too cold to go outside and get the broom, so I'm just making room for myself here. I've got my Guitar Hero guitar. Here we go. Here goes. I'm standing well back now. I am at least two meters away from it. I want to make sure I don't short anything else out. Here goes, here goes, here goes. Ah, anti-climax. Do you know what the problem is? Is my motor, the, the bush. I mean the brush, I keep calling it a bush. Brush. Right, that's not working. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm gonna unplug it. And we'll put our, our multimeter onto these contacts here. And then we'll see what they read. If they read 240 volts, we know then that it would have been working. It's that bush brush, there is not brush, making contact, brush. see. Okay, let's try that again. Right, we're on again. Guitar Hero time. Let's see if the meter gives us a reading. There you go. 288 volts and off. Yeah, and ready? Yay! So if I had to put it on right the first time round, it would have worked. Let me unplug that. So if this thing could have been taken apart without damaging it, then the only thing that needed replacing was the fuse. Obviously in taking it apart you completely ruin it and I can't see any other way of doing this. No amount of heat is going to make those two parts separate. So it's just unfortunate. Although it could have been fixable in this instance because of the way it's been manufactured it makes it impossible to fix. Anyway, that's life. Let's get on with the end of the video. Well, there you go. That was quite an eventful video. Not a safe video, but an eventful video. But you know what? I think I learned more than if I just had a simple fix, like if there was the lead was broken here or something, I just had to attach a new plug. I will never, ever, ever look at a DC motor without checking first of all about positive and negative. I'm thinking that I can't be the only one. If you're watching this, I'm thinking quite a few of you would have also thought that the DC motor would just work both ways that it wouldn't actually be important about the polarity because it would have just spun backwards but there was componentry in here so maybe that's what stops it from going the other way and blue instead maybe i haven't checked but maybe it's important that some of these attachments only spin in the one direction otherwise maybe they won't chop properly you know if they're going backwards it wasn't the safest of videos Looking back while I'm editing it now, I felt safe second time round when I was doing it from a distance and with the Guitar Hero with a screwdriver on. Nice little innovation there. Feel free to use that. I uh, First time round though, that could have exploded in my face. You've seen how far the sparks came out. Well, you know, if one of those components had exploded, that could have got me in the face and that would have come out with some serious force. So yeah, oh, you've got to be so, so careful when working with anything with mains electricity going into it. So uh, yeah, but still, hopefully it made for an entertaining video. Once again, thank you, Steve, for sending these out to me. Hopefully I will see you all again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.